Hi, my name is Flo Ngala. I'm a portrait photographer and celebrity photojournalist. Today, I want to share five tips on upping your photography game that I learned from my craft in working with talent, working with people who are usually strangers, and trying to find the best way to get the most authentic shot in the least amount of time. Tip number one, conversation is key. So we all learn that it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And then we're also taught that a picture is worth a thousand words. So what do you say when you want to get a picture worth a thousand words? I feel like in my experience, I always love to approach new subjects, strangers or talent with conversational tones. Sometimes I'll go and introduce myself personally, I'll give a compliment, I'll strike up a conversation. I think it's so important for the person, the subject in front of your lens to be comfortable with the photographer and a very easy way to bypass some of the awkwardness that already comes from being on set is to strike up a conversation. Tip number two. So the next tip is more so technical than social. Um, this tip is called lower the aperture. When I first came into photography, I remember being a high school student, entering the B&H store, having to pick up my material, learning how to develop in the dark room. And what I loved the most about the photography I was learning about in school was just getting that depth of feel, that bouquet, that graininess, that intimacy in images. So I really, really studied and tried to figure out what is it that makes images look this way. And I found out that it had to do with something called depth of field. For me, I try and shoot at f-stops as low as 1.4. Um, I have a 50 millimeter 1.2, a Canon lens. Um, and where possible, I try and use my best judgment with when it's appropriate to use a really shallow depth of field or when you do need to widen something out to get better detail. But a lot of times when you're capturing portraits of a person, I think that if it's a street photograph or um, a headshot, that low depth of field, that lower aperture, really gets you that feeling of closeness and proximity, almost like what the natural human eye would do if they had someone right in front of them. I just crossed my eyes. <laughs> but yes, that's my tip number two. Tip number three, something else that really inspired me beyond just aperture was also prime lenses. Now we all know that a lot of film lenses, a lot of traditional analog film had um, not the ability to zoom in then. So for me, I learned to use low lighting. I learned to try and get my images sharp with that lower aperture. And I think a lot of times these days, if we're starting out in photography, we'll find that we'll go for the zoom lens. We want the flexibility and the range, but secrets out, the zoom lenses usually don't have the same amount of sharpness and crispness as primes. So personally, I usually try and stick with my 35-1.4 by my side as much as I can. I do have a 24-70 f2.8 as well, which everyone should have in their kit, but I'll be honest, what I'm shooting, I literally try my best to go with prime lenses because you just can't get past that sharp, crisp quality. So prime lenses are my favorite. Tip number four is to revisit your relationship with black and whites. That might sound old school to some, that might sound stylistic to others, but I'm really being plain and simple here. A lot of what I've learned as a photographer came from not having a choice but to learn black and white film photography. There's something about seeing images or seeing the world in terms of lighting, in terms of tones, in terms of composition that you really can learn from shooting an image and developing it in black and white or shooting it out of your camera in black and white. Um, I feel like one thing that I love about photography is, you know, the eye. Of course, people have different reasons why they like people's photos, but for me, it's all about seeing if people are really getting that decisive moment, right? And I think one of the best ways to make sure that as you're shooting, you're not just shooting for aesthetic maybe, or just for um, something that may look nice, but really, at least in my opinion, getting an a essence of an image, a moment, capturing something decisively, all that being said, I just think that black and white images can really do something different to the mind and different to the psyche when we really study how to capture images and to see images in terms of black and white. My fifth tip is to photograph on the invisible axes. So 
You're looking at me right now, but horizontally, there's other things in my plane. There's also vertically other things in my plane. Sometimes when you're capturing a subject, your face, your body, your eyes can't always follow your camera exactly to maybe get a different angle or a different view. So one thing I like to do sometimes, especially in the past when working with artists and working in tight spaces, maybe working amongst video crews, and we all know how that can go sometimes on set, you have to be really creative about the way that you approach getting the shot that you want. So a lot of times, you know, trusting my focus, trusting my um, aperture, whatever the speeds are on, shutter speed wise as well, I'll kind of go ahead and use my camera in different kind of creative ways and settings. And I think also it can be less intimidating for the subject when your camera is not right against your face, but maybe like subtly, you know, of course with their consent or if they know that you're, you know, the photographer on set or you're working. Um, yeah, but being able to kind of just be creative about the invisible axes that we're missing if we're only following where our eyes are. There's so much other space for us to put our hands. So really use your reach. <laughs> Bonus tip. Fake laughter is something that I like to use sometimes to get my subjects or a group of people kind of awkwardly laughing. A lot of times you'll find that when people are faking laughing, they'll start laughing at themselves laughing. So something that I like to do sometimes is use that ask or that request of, hey everyone, okay, fake laugh, everyone talk to each other. That's something else I say a lot. Everyone act like you're, you know, mingling. I like to try and make jokes so that people can kind of, one, express themselves in a way that's not as stiff maybe or as like awkward as they would feel in a photo shoot. But also it's really those beautiful moments in between that laughter and like those, you know, just slight point two or a little seconds before or after where you really get something that feels in the sweet spot of authentic yet like, you know, if it's commercial, if it's editorial, whatever it is, yet maybe still understanding whatever the brief is. And a lot of times, of course, it's most important to make sure you're getting the real laughter and authentic laughter when you can. I hope these tips helped. For any other questions or tips you need, find me online at Flo and Gala on Instagram and flowandgala.com. Sometimes you'll also catch me on Twitter as well. Have a good one, guys.